Thanks for joining us. Let's take a look at one of our finds. This is a Gateway 750 Select. It's from the 1999 era, and it is a slot A system with a 750 megahertz Thunderbird Athlon processor. It's partially disassembled, and when I obtained it, it was uncertain whether or not it was actually functioning. Uh, we got an orange light, or an amber light, on the front panel when we tried to boot it as it was configured, and that was with these two sticks of SD RAM. It did have a network card. It does have a network card, I should say, and it is a... 1995 network card. I think this was added by a previous owner. I don't believe this would have come with this network card. The sound card that it has inside is an audio PCI. So this would be an Insonic audio PCI. And, well, it might be a gateway audio PCI. I'll have to check on that. I apologize. And it's probably contemporary to the system. Gateway had gone away from any ISA sound cards several years before. I am not sure if this TNT2 M64 is original to the system or not. It is an AGP system. This is an AGP card. If I can get this running, I do plan to put in a Gateway 2000 Voodoo 3 card that I obtained separately. And it has a modem on the bottom PCI slot. Let's pull that out quick, take a look at that. And it's just a PCI modem, software modem. Is it, is it original to the system? I have no doubt the system would have come with a modem. I'll have to do a little research on that too. And the power supply for this Thunderbird 750 is an Aztec 200 watt. It's a standard ATX of the time. You'd think possibly it would put, they would put something beefier in here, but it's very clean. And here we have our 200 watt power supply. Another concern, assuming I get the motherboard and CPU working, is we do have a bit of jankiness to the front of the case. This thing has had a rough life, a little bit. So there are some broken connectors on here. The plan would be to go ahead and pull the front of the case, clean it up, paint it as original as possible, saving the logos here and here and here and keeping the CD-ROM in the floppy. The floppy is probably original. The CD-ROM drive feels like it's been upgraded. It doesn't look OE, but it's in good shape and it is a CD rewrite. Not that I'll ever rewrite anything on this system, but I would probably keep that. Once I get this repainted and I reattach it, the idea with a case like this is just to hot glue it in place and attach it to the metal skeleton. Just get it hot glued in place, keep it all original. And then we do have a 30 gig Quantum Fireball IDE drive. There we have it, folks. This is the next project up to bat. I'm gonna strip it out, get that motherboard separated, and test bench it with different RAM configurations. To my thought, it feels like an amber flashing light is more of either a video issue or a RAM issue. So I'll try with one stick in all the slots, and then I'll try with uh, a different video card, maybe just a PCI video card. Hopefully we're good. Slot A motherboards and chips. Really don't want to spend the money to pick any up. I really want this to work. I want to keep it original. Let's get it stripped out and take a look at that motherboard a little closer and in person. I was essentially correct on what was broken. These two bottom supports are actually snapped off. 
These will actually wind up being hot glued to the actual chassis itself when we're done with the touch-up work on the front. I did take the light plastic out. This is the LED light magnifier. It's intact. What's broken is the power button and it's missing half of the rocker. I'm fairly confident that given a little time and ingenuity, I should be able to find a little nub of plastic the same size and actually glue that on there so we can rock the power button because it's a rocker. All right, that is the disassembly. We're gonna pull the motherboard out, take a look at it, and try it on the test bench. Right now, no why, I've tried every combination of memory I could think of in each of the slots. I've even bumped it up to 133 megahertz RAM. I am running it without any drives. The processor's fan spins. I know the monitor works. I was just testing several CPUs and video card combinations on an Intel slot one board. I'm even using the power supply that came with the gateway system. And I do know for sure that this GeForce 2MX200 is a solid working card. All we get is this. We get spinning power supply fan, we get spinning CPU fan, no beeps. The keyboard does flash and it is plugged in correctly, but no other keys ignite. It's just dead, 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 dead. Is it the CPU or is it the main board? I have no idea. I know some of you will say, let's check for caps. I'll show you the caps on this board. This is a very interesting board. This board, folks, really doesn't have any standard capacitors. Thus, none of them are popped. I welcome thoughts and suggestions. I'm going to keep working on the case. The only thing I can think of, if I can't get this motherboard CPU working, I could purchase another motherboard for 50 plus 30 shipping. I could purchase another CPU for 50 plus nine shipping. Neither really makes a lot of sense at this point. I could put a super micro slot one motherboard in this system with an 800 megahertz P3. And that's the direction I'm going right now if I can't get this motherboard working as I continue to restore the case. I welcome suggestions and comments. This is part one of the Gateway Select 750 saga. Till next time.